Hey, welcome GMB pros. Welcome everybody on the uh, replay. I appreciate you guys joining and your support. We were just talking here with Sean and Marcus and Jeffrey and Henry. Tim's good faithful has been showing up. I did see your message. You're not in a spot where you can talk, not a problem, but thank you. I appreciate everybody that's um, joining us. Um, hopefully you brought some questions here for Adam Machesny. Right. And um, so just to guys give you a little intro and how I met Adam. So I went to um, Lead Snaps Mastermind with Patrick. Right. And so I think I got there a day early or early that day. And I was hanging out with uh, Spencer. He's like, hey, let's go down to the um, the. Um, the house, the, the Airbnb, the guys are hanging out there. It's like, okay. So I go, you know, in there and, you know, there's not that many of us. I walk in just conversating and then people are like, Shh, like shushing me a little bit. Right. And this is Adam's on a call. I have no idea who Adam is. Right. Like, you know, and I walk in there and I see this dude in the kitchen table in front of his laptop doing like a Zoom call or a group call or something. And he's just at it. He, you know, he's at work. I'm like, oh, man, I, I'm looking at myself here. I, you know, just grinding at the kitchen table. Mind you guys, I had no clue who this guy was at all, you know. And um, so I don't know what happened. He gets off or we walk outside or something. Spencer's like, oh, yeah, Adam, you know, he's one of our speakers. And I'm like, wow. You know, it was very um, impressive that we have a speaker that is still grinding just like the rest of us, right? <laughs> still grinding like myself at that time, right? And I still am, you know, don't get me wrong, but it was so cool, you know, and then, you know, we I went in and we introduced each other and, you know, you know, what do you do? You know, oh, you know, uh, you know, marketing. And I started with William Jones. He's like, oh, funny story. I kind of got my start with William Jones and I'm like, oh man, what a small world, but it was very encouraging guys want to see somebody that, you know, walks the talk. Right. And number two, that, you know, somebody that's ahead of you, that kind of like you're following their path and you know, where they started. Right. <laughs> so it's been a blessing uh, to meet him. Uh, you know, we, we did the, the mastermind, and Adam put a challenge out there, like, you know, just like when he went to a group and Barry Nix was there and Barry attested to Adam as far as this branding thing, right? And he put a challenge out there and says, guys, I'm going to put this challenge and I don't know, Adam, what, 50, 60 people there, right? And, you know, post every day, post every day, post every day. And I took that personal and I took it upon, you know, like, okay, I'm going to take Adam's um challenge and putting in the work right putting in the work and so and i have it's been a struggle but i have been the most consistent and i have and guys bring out your notepads your pins you know those in the replay watch it again because adam will have it, it works he'll give you his tips he'll give us his journey why how much what the balance of this whole personal branding to grow your agency right so adam with that man welcome i appreciate you you know and then for those of us that haven't you know gotten to know you as close um you know can you take us on your journey right back you know the days that you were in that kitchen table grinding and and you know finding a white label and starting out with william and just kind of like the the mini version how you got here yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate the the backstory and, and for having me on, man. I, I've been following you ever since we met and I've been seeing your posting and, and seeing where you started, right? I think everybody looks at like what is what is great or what does perfect look like and all these things, but like you gotta start obviously somewhere. And so just a testament to you on on the growth that you've had over that that short period of time, I guess. That was in February, so about eight months ago. It feels like it was yesterday, but super excited to be here, guys. Um, I got started in digital marketing back in 2018, so I, I got started in rank and rent, and so I know a lot of you guys are familiar with that, and essentially didn't do a whole lot 
with actually making money with it because I was in medical device sales. So I sold CPAP equipment for a couple of years and then uh, was at a smaller uh, medical device company right before that. And from 2018 to 2020, before I went full time into digital marketing, I was essentially just building websites on my own, like the little Weebly websites, some WordPress, things like that, and just like testing a bunch of different crap. And so my background, like where I really, really nerd out and dive in is in website design and SEO myself. And I built 200 websites almost on my own with the help of a couple different people and got to a point where I was like, man, I really love this, but I don't know if I can make this into like a full-time business because I had all these different websites. I had all these leads coming in, but I didn't know how to sell digital marketing and I was overcomplicating it. So I, I was really good at medical device sales, but I couldn't make the distinction. I was almost afraid that like, if I started making money with, with digital marketing, I would have this like decision. Do I leave medical device sales where I was making multiple six figures with all the benefits and upward mobility for the rest of my life? Or do I take this chance in myself? Fast forward to 2019. At the end of 2019, I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go all in on this stuff in 2020. I just got married. Um, eventually we want to have kids, you know, all that stuff. And I think this is going to be an outlet for me to have that, that freedom, that lap, laptop lifestyle, if you would. And so 2020 started, I was waking up, I was working another job, obviously in medical device sales. I was waking up at 4 AM starting work, going up until eight. And then after I would get off at five or six, like I was just burning both ends of the, of the candle. And I started to get a lot of momentum. Well, then I'm already on this, like, self-development, like I'm going to make this into a business path when COVID hit. And so then I went from traveling across the state of Missouri to just being cooped up in my home and like literally taking days and weeks off of work because they were asking us to do it. And so I just continued to go all in. And in the course of about six weeks after COVID started, I ended up having like $10,000 in recurring uh, revenue in the business. So I'm like, man, I need to go all in. So July, 2020 came, I put my two weeks in. And then from July to uh, April of 2021, that's when I was kind of getting my start into the traditional agency model where I got introduced to William, uh, started getting connected with him and started having him do some stuff on the back end and, and website builds and things like that. Because like when I first got started and doing the traditional agency stuff, and I'm going to take my jacket off here, it's getting kind of hot in this office. I'm in St. Louis, for those of you uh, that, that don't know, and 71 second, and then it's 40 the next. But uh, getting back to the story. So I, I didn't know about white label. Like I thought I had to design every single website. Like I knew that there was probably people that could help me out there, but like I didn't want to hire like my own team. I wanted the control, but like the white label stuff just like absolutely made sense. So I went from doing, you know, $10,000 a month. I got it up to 30 K from basically July, 2020 until April of 2021. And then I became a franchise of height, which is where I'm at right now. Grew that book of business within two years from 20 clients and about $30,000 in recurring revenue to 200 K in recurring revenue in two years and about 120 ongoing clients. And then now I'm a partner at all of height. So we've transitioned a little bit, but a couple months ago, I became a partner at all of height and across that journey. I mean, I've been at like every step that you guys are at in the last three years. So I'm not super removed of, of like, man, this happened 10 years ago. And as Alfredo mentioned, like in the day to day in our business right now, I'm solely over our growth department in addition to owning the company on sales and prospecting. So that is like my baby, that is like what I do. And I still like, I have a sales team now, even since Alfredo and I first got connected, we have four more people on our team, but mm. I'm the top of the funnel. I'm the person that are, is getting people excited about digital marketing. When a lot of business owners don't, they know that they need digital marketing, but they don't love talking to digital marketing agencies. So that's kind of a quick snapshot um, of the last five or six years in, in uh, just a couple of minutes. So can you dive, Adam, into a little bit more, like, for those that are like, you know, when you said, like, man, I don't really want to dive into this because if I'm successful, then I really got to go all in. Like, what was that balance? Because for some of us, 
are already making six figures. You know, they have a good job, the pension, the quote stability, right? So can you tell us like that, you know, when you did it, when you build it up to 10 and you said, okay, I got to go all in, like, that's it. You know, how was that thought process? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. And I don't think it's like the same answer or the same formula to get to the answer for everybody. And so for me specifically, I was at a point in my life where I just got married. Like when, by the time I got into digital marketing, I proposed my wife, got married, COVID happened. Then we ended up buying our house. And then I go all in on this a couple of weeks after, you know, buying this house. And so for me, I looked a lot forward down the road, like, right. Like what does it look like when we start to have kids and have a family and all those things? And I said, does the, does the digital marketing company put me closer to the lifestyle that I want to live and the freedom and, and a lot of the, the tangible things that like I can touch or does going and working for somebody else do that? And I knew the answer, you know, right away, but I didn't believe in myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So I thought, Hey, I know how to build websites. I know how to generate leads. I know that this can be valuable and useful because I was selling, you know, leads here and there. I was renting out these websites and things like that. But I didn't have the confidence that like this, like me as an individual could be an entrepreneur. I'd always worked for somebody else. I'd always tried to start businesses here and there, but like I never actually started something and complete. Like I, I'm sure a lot of us have like can can feel that on this call. Like where we're like, hey, I'm gonna start doing this. And then like two weeks in or like two days in, we're like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna <laughs> give up. I'm gonna go back to the to the safety net. And so I think I just got to that point in my life where I was like, F this, I'm going all in. And the worst that could happen is I have to go back and get a job. I have to go back to where I'm at right now. And yeah, you know, I'll have taken a hit to the ego and I'll feel, you know, sad for myself for a little bit. But if I don't see what's on the other side of like the hard work and the dedication and the commitment, I'm always going to look back to that point and be like, man, what, what could have been? Right. And so like, I couldn't imagine going back and, and again, every day is, is different and unique in, in this way versus working for somebody else. But like, I finally just decided like enough is enough. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to see what happens. And I, I just filed the game plan and, and um, I didn't know the game plan, but I started to learn over time and follow successful people and, and get in the right rooms and, and really just take a chance. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Now, I think that kind of drives us to like today's topic, right? Like I remember like hearing your story in Florida at uh, Lead Snaps event, you know, so when you say you went all in, it, what made the difference? Like, did you picture where you're at now? Like you're saying you're top, you know, you're part owner, you're, you know, you're in charge of the whole sales, like, did that, you know, like, and then. What was that bridge as far as personal branding and, and like what made that difference? Like, I think like personal branding is almost like the long tail, the long game. But I think that like this was not too long ago mm -hmm. where you went from one to the other, especially when you took it from 10 to 30 to 200. Like, what are some of those steps as a person? What are some of those steps as a brand that you took? If you can dive in and even if you want to go into your like presentation, you know, your talk for today. Yeah, absolutely. So I think like holistically is a lot of people are like, man, I I need to envision what like the next three to five years and even 10 years actually look like. And while I think that that's super, super important. I'm talking about all of this stuff that's happened in the last three years. If you would have even asked me a year ago, if I would have been a partner at Hyatt, I would have told you like, you're crazy. Right. And then two years before that, what I accomplished that following year, I'd have been like, you're absolutely crazy. So what I like, what I go back and think about is like, yes, I knew I was going to be successful, but su the definition of success for me has changed over time. And I've taken different steps and, and done different things in order to, again, to go back to that lifestyle that I was like trying to create. And so could I have continued to do my agency on my own before I joined Hype? Yes. Could I have continued to ran my franchise as a Hype you know, franchise instead of being a partner of the whole thing? Yes. 
But I go back to the lifestyle that I want to live and then the purpose and, and, and the commitment that I have is which is to impact as many people as I possibly can, which allows me to do things like hop on this call and provide as much value as I possibly can in 60 minutes. So I tell people and what I typically try to do now is I, I block out what I envision for the next 90 days. Now, again, I have my one year goals. I have my three and my five. But if you don't have those like 90 day increments where you're like, this is the focus for 90 days. Here's what we're trying to accomplish in the next 90 days. And then relaying that into one, three, five and 10 or however long you're planning out, then I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And a lot of times we over anticipate what we can accomplish in a year. You're like, man, I can go from 20,000 in recurring to 200,000 because I heard one guy do it one time and, and whatever. It's like, no, you can't. It, but most likely you, you can't, right? Like realistically speaking, we can't. But then we underestimate what we can do in two years, in three years, in five years, right? And so when we try to think like, man, I'm gonna do all of these things in this next year and like, I'm just gonna go on this all out sprint. I've done that before, doesn't freaking work, leads to burnout. You start to burn bridges with relationships and you burn your business down and like you piss a bunch of people off. And like, that's not good either because it's not gonna get you to that two or three, five or whatever plan that is. So I would say like holistically speaking, you need to start simplifying the things that you're overcomplicating right now in your life and in your business, whether that's your health and your fitness, whether that's, you know, relationships, whether that's prospecting and sales, like whatever that might be, break it down to daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly type of stuff. And you'll start to be able to see like this stuff is attainable, but it's not going to happen this year, or it's not going to happen next month, those types of things. Secondarily, when you're kind of talking about the personal branding stuff, and, and I wanted this to more be like an open conversation, because like every time that I've learned this, even since like I gave that presentation, Alfredo, and I spoke in Costa Rica over the summer to 300 agency owners, and I give the presentation, right? And the presentation works, but I think a more interactive environment typically leads to the best overall results because people can hit me with questions. But secondarily, like when I'm just reading off a PowerPoint, I think people the feedback that I've gotten recently, and I'm always trying to get better with this stuff, is people look at it as like, oh, Adam's done this. And this is what like great looks like and all of these other things. But like, I could never do that. Three years ago, I had never posted on Facebook, you know, one time, like other than just like a random vacation or like going to a sporting event and things like that. So you have to start somewhere. But the reason why personal branding is that thing that can unlock that next level in your business, especially in your agency, is most people aren't going to do what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's the thing that like is the, hey, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. People are going to like look at me different because I'm talking about like motivation and discipline and self-development. And I'm also trying to promote my business. And I don't, I, I fear what other people might think about that, right? Like, I think that's that's like hurdle number one. And then you go into like the consistency and the discipline of, I'm gonna do this twice a day, every single day for the next 365 days. Well, again, if you're looking at that year long thing, you're gonna be sitting there posting and be like, man, I did it today. Now I have 364, no. Break it down into a 90 day goal where you're just like, heck, for the first or for the next 90 days, I'm going to do this. Even break it down for like, I'm just going to look at today and be like, today I'm going to post twice a day. And I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to do the same freaking thing. Like, whatever is the best for you, don't overcomplicate it. But where most agency owners go wrong is when they do post, they typically only talk about themselves. Or they'll use the same case studies and the same results. And sometimes they'll rip the results off of other agency owners that they just see because they don't have actual clients. But when you start to go and try to like add people on Facebook or send people messages and do that cold outreach, they're like, oh my gosh, another agency owner, right? They're another person promising 10 to 20 new jobs a month and the first page of Google in the next 90 days. And you immediately like put yourself behind the eight ball. I realized that when I was doing this stuff on the side is like when I was giving people leads for free and I was auditing their website, not asking for anything in return, 
people are like, man, I didn't know that people in digital marketing like could do like, I didn't know that people like had an actual soul and that they were actually nice and that they were actually a human being. I thought they were just in it to like take my money. And so I started to like connect the dots between what made me successful in medical device sales, which was like the discipline, the consistency, the hard work, all of those things with like what marketing agency owners were just like completely screwing up. And so I put that in the middle once I needed to obviously start selling it and making some money from it. And the thought process was, man, I'm just going to go out. I'm going to provide a ton of value. I'm going to start sharing their content and commenting on their stuff and just like connecting them with people in my network and providing the things on, on social media specifically of like tips and information, motivation and dip, discipline, like what is going on right now that entrepreneurs, regardless if they're a plumbing company, a digital marketing agency owner, a roofer, like what are they struggling with, right? And how can I get them to that next level in their business, right? Whether directly or indirectly. And man, for the first 90 days, I felt like, dude, why am I doing this? In the first 90 days, like I got no clients from it. I was getting people like ripping off my like posts and they were sending them in group chat text messages like, hey, this is like the next Tony Robbins or who does this guy think he is? All those types of things. So I'm like, the heck with this. My agency, I'm not making much money at all. Cause I was like reinvesting it back into like masterminds and business coaches with like a whole other topic of conversation probably for another time. But like, I felt like I hadn't made any progress at all and I had nothing to show for it. And then I swear, like right at that 90 day mark, I got my first client from it. And it was like, and, and again, I say first client from it because the message was blatantly like, hey, Adam, you added me on Facebook a couple of months ago and have been posting consistently. And I just so happened to need a new website. And he was a local guy, right? And he had been a client, for, he's been a client for three years and just ended up selling his business. So um, different story, but like, that was a lifetime value client in digital marketing agency where you're like doing everything for three years, which is pretty awesome. That was my first client that came from it. And I started to like think, okay, like if I can get like at that time, like three or four more of those, then like that's what I need to get to my next level in business. Cause I was doing all like the video audits and the cold outreach. Like I was doing multiple things. Well, then like two weeks later, some guy reached out to me that I tried to pitch back in 2018 on a lead gen site that was like, Hey man, I see like you're doing like not the whole weird lead gen thing anymore. Like, can you do this for my business as well? And I had just like increased my pricing, which was not very much at all. And he was like, Oh dude, like literally give me a higher package. And I didn't know if I had a higher package or not. He's like, dude, no, like this is my budget. Like I want to pay you two grand a month for SEO. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm like literally I quoted him a thousand bucks or whatever it was at the time. I can't even remember. So like it just started like piece by piece to start going. And then over the course of that was, you know, almost three years ago. And over the course of the last three years, it's like this trickle down effect where it's like now we'll get anywhere from two to five leads a day, typically during the week from something that comes from my touch points on social media, whether that's somebody tagging me or our business, whether that's somebody reaching out to my DMs, whether somebody sending me an email or a contact form to the website saying they saw me on social media or a current client or a referral partners like, hey, Adam, meet Alfredo, like he's looking for digital marketing type of stuff. And I can't even count the return on investment now the difference is I'm doing the exact same work today, albeit I added video content in. I now do a podcast. I do two weekly YouTube videos. And again, the reels and the videos are more popular and they weren't really around when I got started. But I'm doing that exact same type of work today that I was doing back then. The, the return on investment and the compounded interest of doing that work is just exponential. But most people don't make it a month consistently. Very few people make 90 days and most people don't make it three years. And that's the key differentiation. Awesome. And it's so true. So true. And you gave that last part 
And just to let you know, Adam, you ended your speech with that last part. Most people won't last 30, 90, let alone. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get Adam's attention by being consistent of what his challenge was. And guys, pick up what he's putting down, right? Do not. And it's funny, the exact same timeline that Adam just gave, it's almost identical what happened to me. In fact, recently I had a client come back and that's why I tell you guys, like they're watching. You might not see the likes, the unicorn, the vanity. Don't even pay attention to that. They're watching. I had one client um, the end of last week, beginning of this week. Hey, Alfred, I want to come back. I see, you know, he, and I think it's just what those touch points. And it's almost identical. Like you get one and then it just trickles down and you put your results. But it was almost identical. Now, can you dive in a little bit more, Adam, just to answer Tim and uh, Frederick's answer, that imposter syndrome, the personal branding, and uh, maybe dive into the mix of how you post? Or, you know, do you take one whole day and do one video? Or, you know, some people get stuck. Is, it, is this take a long time? You know, um, and I'll give you my example. So I'm a, just a live, hit live. I did StreamYard, put four, three, four platforms, and just bam, go for it. And you guys will see me in my first videos. I suck, you know, with I misspelled some stuff. I can't say some stuff correctly, but I did it, right? And I'm not, by no means I might still there. But um, can you dive in a little more like your day to day, how to overcome though, like um, that personal development, the prospecting sales? the mixture of posts. I know that that's one thing I remember from your speech. And then how does like, do you take one day? Is it every day? Because you polish this guys. Cause I learned if I do it through my phone, just like Adam says, he has a little notepad ideas come, he writes it down on the notepad. So he has ideas, but if you do it on your phone guys, you can schedule Adam. I don't know if you can do it on your desktop. You can speak on that a little bit and dive into those kind of three areas. Yeah. So I think the first thing with imposter syndrome, like that's always going to be there. Like at any step of this stage, you're always going to have imposter syndrome. Like right now, my imposter syndrome for social media posting and content is like, I'm trying to do more than I've ever done. Do people actually want to see more Adam or is what I'm providing content on? Does it actually move the needle? And do people want to consume that? Because a lot of this stuff like has just been the same thing that I've been talking about for the last couple of years, but in a different, in a different format. Right. So like all of those things are going through my head. And in the beginning, it was a lot of the same things that you're talking about, Tim is like, I fear what people are going to think about me. Um, does this actually matter? Do people want to hear from me? Just know that's not going the way it's going to get easier, but it's like, it's like the, the common thing where people are like, man, and if I can get just get my agency to like a million dollars, like everything is going to be okay in, in a year, right? And so I had that thought in my mind back then, like if I could just get to a million dollar agency, like everything would be okay. Well, the only thing that changes that million dollars in your agency, or at least I did, and a lot of people that I know that are there, it's like there's 10x more problems than you did when you were at 100K a year. You have to have more people on your team. You have to have more clients. Like all of those three things end up with more problems. Now you have a team, you have different processes and systems. So like you're dealing with different issues, but like if you're only focused on the problem and not the actual solution to like overcoming that problem, you're always going to have problems. They're not going to go away. They're only just going to get either and they're, they're going to be elevated where it's like, crap, I got to solve a million dollar agency problem versus a hundred thousand dollar agency problem, or there's going to be more of them. Right. So that's what I would, would, would uh, just encourage you to think about. Right. And, and the secondary thing from that is you really have three different choices when it comes to this stuff, right. Regardless of what it is, you can stay where you're at right now. Right. So you're like, all right, I can feel the imposter syndrome and just kind of stay put. So I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to let that imposter syndrome 
not take the chance on my agency or I'm going to let the imposter syndrome not uh, allow me to start posting on social media, whatever that might be. Option number two is like, all right, I'm going to dip my toe at it. But like, this is going to be like the the New Year's challenge where I'm going to go into it and I'm going to give it a try. But like, if I don't lose 30 pounds in the first 30 days, like I'm not going to continue. If I don't get a client in the first week, like I'm not going to continue. I'm going to let that imposter syndrome sink back in. So you're like giving it the old like college try, or you can like finally be like, all right, I'm going to put all of those things aside and I don't care what is going to happen. I'm going to carve out 30 minutes of my day to just intentionally focus on making sure that I do two posts that I'm, you know, adding business owners, whatever strategy you want to do with that social media outreach, you just put it on your calendar and you're like, I'm going to do it for the next 90 days. So there's really those three, you know, there's those, I look at it with any problem. There's, Hey, I can continue doing what I'm doing and not changing. I can like convince myself, Hey, I'm really going to give this a try. But like, if I don't see the quickest, most immediate results, like I'm just going to go back to option number one, or you can finally be like, all right, I'm so sick and tired of like not seeing what's on the other side of the work, the hard work and the dedication and the commitment that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to actually do it. When it comes to the actual strategy around the content itself, I do, you can't schedule on your desktop, but you can schedule on your phone. I don't use any like third party schedulers or anything like that because that kind of ticks off the algorithm um, a little bit, specifically on the organic side, not talking about, you know, the business page side of things. But from there, as I typically try to post Monday through Friday at the exact same time. So for me, it's around 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And about 80 to 90% of that content has nothing to do with digital marketing at all. It's more day in the life of the entrepreneur, ups and downs, uh, motivation, determination, really like whatever honestly comes to my mind with about 10% of that having to do with digital marketing, um, marketing, lead gen, whatever that might be. And with all aspects is it's really, you know, storytelling, right? So you can just even when you're talking about the digital marketing stuff, you can be like, hey, I started working with Alfredo and now he's on the first page of Google and he gets hundreds of leads a month, right? But the better way to do all of this stuff is even with something as simple as that, where you're like, man, if I post that, so many people are going to think this is amazing and they're going to like and they're going to comment and they're going to share it, right? Could be true. But if you can tell a story with that post about that accomplishment, you're going to get other people that are connecting to who Alfredo was when he started working with you and then how the relationship was in the middle and then who Alfredo in his business came out on the other side. So an example would be like, started working with Alfredo in August of 2022. He came to me after working with a couple of different marketing agencies over the last couple of years. He was really trying to reach that next level in his business online. Most of his business came from word of mouth. And we took a look at his website and realized not only did he need a new website, but there were some things on, on the SEO side of things that we really needed to build a better foundation on. And he mentioned that he wanted to start diving into some paid advertising. So we've been doing that for the last year and a half. Here is where he started with leads per week or per month or per whatever. And here's where he ended up getting to right now. And here's what the return on investment or whatever KPI is most important to you. And now Alfredo has actually been able to not only step out more of the day of the day of business, but he's added two more trucks. So then all of a sudden, like the other ideal clients that are reading that post are like, crap, man. I'm just like Alfredo or I've been where Alfredo's at. Like I really need to reach out to Adam because it seems like at some point in Alfredo's journey, Adam was a piece to the overall puzzle on how he got to where he's at today. And all I know is I don't want to be where I'm at right now. I want to be where Alfredo is. So that's the difference behind how most digital marketing or marketing people in general will post versus telling a story and connecting to actually be able to get somebody's like heartstrings pulled and be like, all right, I need to then reach out, like, comment, share, Adam stuff. Um, secondarily, you know, as a side point from that, as Alfredo mentioned, like typically right now, I have a running list of notes in my phone of topics or drawn out sentences that like I could post. If you look at my social, sometimes it's just like, 
a simple line or two, nothing over the top. Sometimes it's going to be a picture with a longer post and things like that. But where most people go wrong is they're like, all right, it's Tuesday. What's Adam going to post today? And then you're like overthinking it to the entirety. And, and don't get me wrong. I have been there, been there last week where it's just like everything under the sun um, seems like it's, it's happening and there's fires you're putting out and you forget about those things. But the more proactive that you can be in planning these types of things, uh, the better typically the quant the, the quality of the content is, which then leads to the engagement and all of those things. So Again, don't overthink it. Don't think that you have to be like in 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 sharing like this life altering, life changing content um, because it's not out. There. Like, like to be honest, guys, even people like Alex Ramosi and all those people, yes, they're some of the brightest minds that are out there. But when you listen to their content, and typically the content where you're like, man, I just took that nugget for from Hermosi or Tony Robbins or any of these people, and mm -hmm. I'm going to go implement that. What is it typically usually? It's typically like the simplest, simplest pieces of information and insights that were like, man, I just needed to hear it a different way. So I would just say, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. Just get started and make it easy on yourself in order to reach whatever goal you're trying to do with your personal branding content. 1000% guys. So I put, um, I put the zoom in there. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. Sorry guys. So I put, um Williams Facebook, uh my Facebook, and I'm gonna throw in Adams. I think they just say my um my last uh yeah, I'll throw that in right now. There you go. And I put Adam's Facebook in there so you guys can see kind of the format, you know, and what we put. And I've literally Adam it, I, it was a local guy, Orange County here in California. He said to me. I see your post. I see you're a family guy. I see you're about your kids. And I'm all about that. He says, and that's why I went with you. Adam, I kid you not. God is my witness. So that whole like 80 personal that Adam's talking about and 20 business, it does pay off because people, like you said, will connect with you as a person, right? And I always say there is enough sunshine for everybody because not everybody is my client or Adam's client or Sean's client, right? They're just not. They connect different ways, right? So, you know, that connection on the personal side, that solidified that statement from that customer. <clears throat> and mind you, it's not an easy in niche. It's it's a um, artificial turf in LA, Orange County, right? It's huge, like little old me like oh man right i gotta do come up with it right but all based on hey you're a family guy i'm all about that and that's why i chose you guys so don't don't over complicate that um so very 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 true i can i can that statement solidified like everything that you're saying and time and time again I, there's that one example one client that'll pop up every single time that that's so true Definitely. So guys, if you have any questions, post them, post them on here. Uh, show Adam some love. You know, like he said, he does have a podcast. He, you know, he has his Facebook, he has his YouTube, um, plenty of interviews that guys, you guys can pick up one or two things. Like I always say, stay plugged in, right? Stay in the loop and it will pay off guys. It does pay off something that you can add to your process or polish your process it will definitely pay off. So Adam, just to switch gears a little bit here, um, fun fact about you that nobody knows, just to throw a curveball in there. Fun fact about me that nobody knows. Um, I probably, so I, I graduated college in four years with four different degrees. So that, I, not a lot of people, I don't really talk about that aspect, <laughs> but I got, uh, I have an HR degree, I have a sports management degree, I have a typical marketing degree, and then I have a uh, corporate management background uh, degree as well. So I took some college classes going in uh, and then took some summer classes as well because I realized I was going to uh, actually graduate a year early in college, potentially if I wanted to. And I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stay around for four years. I, I played college soccer and, um, 
I ended up just realizing, like, just get an extra degree and, and all those things. How many Red Bulls to get four degrees? To be honest, uh, <laughs> not a not a whole lot. I drink a lot of energy drinks. Uh, unfortunately, too many right now. A lot of caffeine with uh, with that. Uh, college was was easy compared to to what I feel like I do right now, and why, not why even right by, by a landslide. Dude, I mean, it, I mean, college for me wasn't that hard. It was just showing up and 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 doing the work, um, and I was decent in 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 school. Now it's like, all right, I'm sur- I feel like I, compared to that, I'm solving some of the world's biggest problems, even though I'm not. It's just like my regimented schedule of stuff that I have to do every single day consistently while owning a part of a of an agency that has 600 clients like there's always something that I could be working on or I should be working on and so as you grow in scale which is probably a good talking point is as you grow in scale everybody thinks like bigger is better and I heard if anybody's familiar with Jesse Itzler uh so he's uh, an incredible public speaker, but he talks about um, bigger isn't better, that like better is better. Mm-hmm. And so I used to always think, man, I want more clients. I want more team members. I want more, 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 more. And sometimes you're less profitable at that higher number. Sometimes you have bigger headaches. Um, there's so many things that that come with getting bigger that don't just automatically equate to better. No. <laughs> How do you dictate that? So in my opinion, as I look back through my journey, the beginning, right? You're, there's that learning curve. Like, can I do it? The social media. So that $1 to $1,000 was hard for me, right? Because of that imposter syndrome that we talked about. But like, at what point do you stop, fix your process? Did you ever stop? Did it Did it break? And then you just put it in there? Like, when is it a good idea to slow down or stop and just focus on the process? Meaning- so the, the earlier, the earlier, the better, right? Yeah. So the earlier, the better, because it's a lot harder to go back and, and reset. Like processes are foundational pieces for business growth. So if you start selling, if you start doing all those things, you're like, oh no, now I got to figure out my onboarding process. Now I got to figure out our SEO process, all those things. And it's a lot easier to do when you have one or no clients than it is to have four or five and it's a lot easier to do it than when you have 30. So I unfortunately didn't have a lot of those things until I had 20 or 30 clients and I was reinventing the process or the cycle for every single client that came on board. I was overworking myself. I was making it a lot more complicated. The work was still getting done, but it was not the most efficient way it didn't make sense to anybody but myself, which is kind of one of those things where if you do want to grow and scale and you need other people on your team, you need to make it to where third graders can understand these simple, repeatable processes. And if you have other people on your team that you're like, hey, they cover client management or sales or all those things, you need to make sure that they have SOPs because if something ever happens to them or they leave or they move into a new position, you need that new employee to be able to walk into that department and to that position and know exactly what needs to be done and what is expected of them. So to answer your question, I waited probably way too long um, in order to do that because nobody could do it better than me. I could just show somebody how to do it one time, one place, one whatever, And I felt like, right, so when you start to do processes and systems, um, especially when you have other people on your team, you, if you're like me, sometimes I will create problems just to go solve them myself and feel like, oh my gosh, I just saved the day when it's like, dude, you didn't have to do that, right? But there is that like control aspect where it's like, you know, that, that can wait till later because like I'm here, right? then you're just an employee with inside of your business and not an actual, you know, business owner or agency owner, whatever you want to call it. Awesome. Okay. So start early (laughs) with one, right? Learn that the process, onboarding, fulfillment, customer service, follow-up touch points, all that do matter. Cause that's what I'm learning right now. Like that onboarding, that follow-up, you know, the touch points in between, 
um, the reporting, right? Those are all all important. Like um, you never want them to call you. Like you should be, hey, I got this done today. I got this done. Like shoot, one. A lot of agencies don't do that, you know. And two, they're like that buyer's remorse is like almost gone when you, you you're telling them that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Adam, so I hear you got a new addition to your family? Yes, uh, <laughs> baby boy Murphy is about a month old. No, nice, nice. Congratulations, congratulations. So, guys, we're Thank coming you. up to 45 minutes. Uh, I want to respect Adam's time. Hopefully, you guys um, picked up what he put down. It was a true blessing in my life, the simplicity of it, but the effectiveness that this does pay off. And be like you said, 90 days, guys, because it just takes one for that live bulb to come on. And everything he just said, up to this 45 minutes, 40 minutes, like all of a sudden it becomes even more clearer, right? A lot clearer. And guys, surround yourself with winners. That's one of my formulas in my series. And one of the ways you do that is by meeting somebody like Adam, whoever your mentors are, and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, literally all my messages, if you look at our chats till recently, have, hey, I'm posting, or I've been staying consistent. Hey, how you doing? And like, Adam knows, so when he sees Alfred, it's like, ah, or like, it's another guy that I give advice to and nothing happens, right? So and that's my goal, because it was super encouraging. Not only does he speak in Costa Rica with the higher team, but I'm from Costa Rica, right? So it's like all the stars and the moon are aligning and the numbers and whatnot. So it's very cool and very encouraging. And I I appreciate you, Adam, um, and, and you joining us and dropping these bombs. And, I, you know, from some of the questions, you know, I know it, it will relate to a lot of people where they're at. And hopefully they can get over that hump. So again, guys, show Adam that love. Follow him on this podcast. It is great. Um, so last question, if you can kind of close it up, Adam. But the whole beard thing with your podcast, how did, like, is that just to be different? Or how did you put those two together? Yeah, so I, I think it's a little bit of both, right? So I, my podcast is called Entrepreneur for, for those that might not be familiar. And, and I, I bring on uh, entrepreneurs of all sorts of, of kinds and I compare their journey and ask them, you know, questions based on where they started, where they're at today and like everything in between and came to the conclusion that like every entrepreneur has a different story across their, their path, no different than how a beer is brewed. And so I kind of just came together with the name entrepreneur and took it from there. Ah, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I always like that part in there, like, Ah, he's making the connections, but it is different, right? Besides the knowledge and the people you have on there, it's great. So I love it. So follow him, guys. Look him up. Give him, show him some love. Those that are in the replay, the podcast, you know, the you know, hit him up on Facebook. Show him some love. Adam, I appreciate you. I thank you once again. Guys, personal branding, get your, your post up there. Remember, twice a day um, for 90 days, right? 90 days. Um, absolutely repeatable. Let's see. Uh, Repeat the podcast name. Yeah, I'll put it in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I I appreciate you guys. Guys, thank you again. And like I always uh, say, much love, much success, and I'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you.